So for this problem, we have five kilograms of oxygen, and it undergoes a process from initial pressure one of five bar and a temperature at state one of 400 Kelvin to a final pressure of one bar and final temperature of 800 Kelvin. Assuming the ideal gas behavior for this oxygen, determine the change in the entropy in kilojoules per Kelvin, assuming with the constant uh, specific heats evaluated at 600 Kelvin, and then variable specific heats. All right, so there's two approaches to calculate the same thing, which is the change in the entropy. We take a good look at the units on this, and there is no kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, it's kilojoules per Kelvin, and so it's the, the entropy, not the specific entropy that we're asked to calculate. So we can calculate that in a couple different ways. Let me just uh, attack it with the part A with the constant specific heats. We recall the equation. This is actually, I'm going to write it two ways right here. I'm going to write it like this. Uh, we can put uh, C sub P, natural log of the final temperature T2 divided by T1, minus R, natural log of the final pressure P2 divided by P1. Or you could put C sub P bar, natural log of T2 over T1, minus R bar, natural log of P2 over P1. All right, I didn't write that C sub P bar. Let me try it again. C sub P bar. There you go. So what's the difference? This is on a per unit mass basis. This is on a per unit amount basis. The mass measured in kilograms, the amount in kilomole. All right. So if you want to do it with the, on a mass basis, then we, we need to calculate the mass. Let me do this. I left out one part that's real important. All of this times M, the mass, or all of this times N, the amount. I didn't write that all that well. Either one. So you either need to know the mass or the amount, and you can go back and forth in between them. Um, since they gave us that the mass was 5 kilograms, let's just use the top equation. So we need to get the C sub P. Well, they tell us to evaluate the constant specific heat at 600 Kelvin. Well, what you do is you go to a particular table, in that table being the um, A20. So at table A20, at 600 Kelvin for the oxygen gas, we find 1.003 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Again, that's from table A20. Uh, for oxygen at that temperature of 600 Kelvin. Okay, what about R? Well, R would be R bar divided by the molar mass of the oxygen, the molar mass of oxygen. Uh, you can get it out of table A1. It's uh, 32 kilograms per kilomole. And so when we put in the universal gas constant 8.314 divided by 32, we pick up R 0 0.25981 kilojoules per kilogram of oxygen degree Kelvin temp all right so that's R okay so we're we, it's like we've got the mass the specific heat the R we've got the T2 and the T1 the T2 is right here the T1 is right there we've got the P1 and the P2 the P1 and the P2 and at this point I'm just going to say you can plug and chug and calculate that S2 minus S1 comes right in at, for constant specific heats, 5.567 kilojoules per Kelvin. So that's the answer for part A. Now, what about accounting for variable specific heats? Well, with variable specific heats, we use the table um, A23, where for the constant specific heats, we use table A20 in our textbook. 
okay, well, what is the basic equation? Well, it's just like these, this equation here. I'm going to write it like this, kind of continuing the theme. It's, it's like on a mass basis or on a molar basis. So on a mass basis, it would be the mass times the S naught at T2 minus the S naught at temperature T1 minus the R natural log of P2 over P1, done. And so when we compare these equations, they're very similar on the last term. It's that R natural log of P2 over P1. It's just the difference in the C sub P natural log of T2 over T1 or this S naught 2 minus S naught 1. Okay. Let's continue and write it on a molar basis, the amount. Then we just have S naught bar at 2 minus S naught bar at 1 minus R bar natural log of P2 over P1. Now again, this is our textbook uses this bar on top to distinguish molar basis versus a mass basis. So when you see this bar on top, it's, it's the value per amount, not per mass. Okay. Well, what we can do is we can go to the table A23 and we can say S naught bar 2 is equal to S naught bar 2 well is a function of the gas of interest make sure we get into the oxygen column and then the temperature of um, T2 of 800 Kelvin and we should be able to come back with that value of 213.765 kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin and likewise S bar naught one the only difference is we're evaluating at 400 Kelvin and it comes in whoops I got them backwards I just gave the value for the 400 Kelvin this is the um, 213.765 and at 800 Kelvin it's 235.81 Okay, both the same units, kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin. So um, you can maybe, you know, you can use either way, uh, either one of these equations work. They're just, you can go back and forth between them by the number of moles will be the mass divided by the molar mass. So you could actually calculate how many and what's the amount and then use this second equation or just take the whole equation right here and divide by the molar mass and it's it's like uh, this the top equation so anyway um, maybe I should put some numbers in just in case let's do it that way let's put in our five divided by our molar mass of oxygen is 32 there you go now that's already in kilomole and then our S bar naught 2, 235.81 minus 213.765 minus R bar 8.314 natural log of the final pressure P2 of 1 bar divided by P1 5 bar and then close parent. And I didn't write the units. Um, here and here and here let me write them on the outside they are kilo joules per kilo mole kelvin and when we cancel our kilo moles we're left with kilojoules per kelvin and so our s2 minus s1 solving taking into account variable specific heats is 5.535 kilojoules per kelvin that's the answer for part B. So they're very close, but they are different. And the reason is, is one is uh, using the tables, counting for variable specific heats, one using approximation where you evaluate the specific heat at some average temperature. Now, if the process is going from 400 to 800, this is a good average temperature. Hence, these two values are really close. Well, that problem solved. <laughs>